of my Elsky study for last year, I ended up summarizing lots of the important stations onto A4 pages. So I felt like I had something nice and simple that came out of something really busy and quite overwhelming. I will definitely be going again with those A4 sheet summaries because <laughs> simple is best. <laughs> As you guys have probably noticed, I can be a bit over the top. Hey guys, it is about 6.30 on Monday the 15th of May and I am home for my first day of my med rotation. I am 12 weeks out from my final exams, which at UTAS in final year med is just one day of 12 OSCEs in a row. I thought I might show you guys how I go about it. First of all, for those of you who don't know, an OSCE is basically just a fake consultation with a patient where the med student acts as the doctor and you have to solve whatever problem they decide to set for you. This year I'll have 12 OSCE stations back to back, you have 2 minutes reading time and and then eight minutes, eight minutes in the room with the patient. The patient for OSCEs is an actor. Every few OSCE stations we get a break as well, which is just the length of another OSCE. They're rest stations. So no more written exams for me as a fifth year student. There's basically four layers for me for what I do to organize myself for OSCEs. Number one is planning. At 12 weeks out, I'm gonna make this week a planning week. The scope of our OSCEs is really quite huge and it's a bit different to how we study otherwise in medical school our written exams where the information that we need to know is usually quite detailed. In OSCEs, the scope is extremely broad and you need to know the basics of heaps of different presentations and approaches. For my planning week, I'm gonna do my best to work out what the scope is. Once I've got my list of topics that I need to cover, I usually distribute these across the weeks that I have left. So over the next 11 weeks following this week, I'll work out which areas I'm gonna study when. There are two layers to me preparing for each of those topics. I will study the base knowledge of that topic and I'll practice the OSCEs themselves. Which brings me to my next layer of studying for OSCEs, which is building a base knowledge. Since third year, I have this running word document where whenever I find relevant information to one of those OSCE topics, I'll put the information in. So that is my major resource, all in one place, instead of having multiple textbooks out and a thousand different types up on your laptop, I like to have it all in one place. It makes it very easy for me to see too, in that case, what I have and haven't studied. Study. And the real reason why I created it was because I often like to merge information. I haven't been able to find one resource yet that doesn't provide too much or too little information for me to be happy that I can use that for all my OSCE study. All the OSCE topics that I've done before this in years three and four and two even I suppose are fair game in fifth year. The fortunate thing about that is I've already prepared the base knowledge and gathered all those resources into this Word document for a lot of the topics already. But there are still a lot of gaps in it. I do still have a lot of work to do on my base knowledge for this year. Despite the gaps of simply missing information, I desperately need to read over all these topics again because so much of what I knew last year has just disappeared. You know what I'm talking about. But hopefully a lot of this base knowledge work for me will just be reading and reconsolidating what I should already know and have in that document. Number three and the most important thing to do with your OSCE study is practice. 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 I feel sometimes like you know the information and of, of course you could just go in and regurgitate it but I am constantly surprised at how much practice I need if I want any chance of getting through these exams. I I need to physically practice them. Maybe some people can get away with not doing it, but I mean, like I said earlier, in my plan, I'll distribute the topics over the weeks, and for each topic that I'm studying each week, I'll revise or build my base knowledge, and then I'll practice the actual OSCE. When I practice these OSCEs, I practice them with other people. I don't try and talk to myself and pretend that the other person's saying the same thing. Either Aaron will practice them with me, or I practice them with friends at school. We don't have any OSCE cases that have been given to us by the university, but there's a med school we've compiled and shared past OSCEs before. It's called the OSCE Dump folder on Google Drive, and you can just take out any OSCEs that you want to try and they often will have a marking sheet not that that corresponds perfectly with what our exams will be but physically practicing is so important. I've also got the OSCE folders at the clinical school which I showed you in my earlier search vlog which I will link below. The fourth and final layer to my OSCE practice is practicing OSCEs that completely throw me off. So topics that I haven't covered or revised because I think they're a bit left field. But I think it's really important to be thrown into the deep end and practice your strategies of coping when you haven't practiced that station. Practice trying to find a system to call on that will tick enough boxes for you to get through and keep the patient safe. So I usually have a few of those OSCEs set to the side, which I haven't looked through, but I know will throw me and just do my best to get through them in hopefully some kind of acceptable fashion. That is my plan of attack for OSCEs this year. I'll get into my planning phase tonight. Sounds very official. Talk to you guys later about how that plan turned out.
my Oski planning week. I have finished my list to the point that I'm happy with my planning. I've got three different lists that I've learned to work off the Oskis that I think works really well for me. The first list is the list that I rearranged from our past Oski topics. We're given a list of Oski topics from our fellow past students, which are just listed by year and about the topic of the station, e.g. patient presence of chest pain, shortness of breath, take history, ask for examination findings, read this ECG and create a management plan based off it. So that's the kind of information that we're given from the past Oskis. What I do with this list is I rearrange it into fourth year and fifth year because there is a slight difference that you'll see in the OSCEs that commonly come up for the years and therefore different study areas offer a bit of a higher yield. For example, studying things like the ethics and protocols and less useful and probably one of the later things that you do in your fourth year study at my university and those sorts of things are much more common to come up for fifth year OSCEs so you definitely want to spend some time understanding those stations well. From the separation to fourth and fifth year, I'll then separate things into their general areas so I'll separate the topics into DP, emergency, surgery, ethics, ONG, pediatrics, psychiatry because I like to do my study blocks in terms of topics so it's helpful for me the list to be in that way. Finally once they're separated out into topics I will separate them out into the years done because the more recent stations again are slightly more likely to reoccur for us and we can just know these patterns from our particular uni from seeing these past OSCE lists. So that is my first list. My second list is a list of the CBL topics for the year and that's found in our unit outline. This gives me an idea of the wider scope of OSCE topics because just because a station hasn't been a past OSCE before, it doesn't mean that it's not fair game for us. So I want to be able to refer back easily to these CBL topics because it is stated in our unit outline that the CBL topics are what our OSCE topics are officially based off. My third list is my rough study plan and I like to do this by week In this list I have the weeks listed out and then under each week I'll have whatever broad area I'm going to study. For example, emergency. Under those I'll have specific OSCEs that I want to study. For example, under emergency I'll actually list acute asthma attack, upper GI bleed, anaphylaxis. The details of the specific stations I don't add in straight away but it means that I have a place for when I remember things that I want to study I can just go to this list and add it in. Understandably you can't learn everything that you need to know in a few days or a week which is all that my study plan will allow at this point. So I'll pick and choose which particular topics I want to learn in ONG for example and then if I don't quite finish that I will move on to PEEVES the next week and that's the whole point of this week by week study plan for me. I love detail, I love learning all the specifics of things. I don't know why, I think I just, I find it interesting. It's easy for me to get bogged down in topics. So my study plan is by week so that I make sure that I have a time limit on things and then I move on to the next topic. I've listed all the broad areas Areas that I need to know and in that way I know that I'm not going to forget any major areas. When I remember a certain OSCE that I think is really important I don't have to madly switch and quickly practice that OSCE otherwise I'll forget it. I can just put it into this list and know that I will get to it at some point when the week comes for that topic. In general I realize that this study method would not suit everybody and for some people they might find it overwhelming. I find it really comforting and I think that's just a personality type thing. I think a really important thing for somebody who wants to go forward in medicine or a health career more generally is to work out how you learn best and how you're most comfortable and how you're the least overwhelmed because you do have to keep learning. Beyond exiting medical school, I will not stop being examined. <laughs> I will not stop learning. I won't be able to. Even if you're not being examined, you will have to constantly learn. Then you need to work out the ways that you can minimize your stress and overwhelm around it while retaining as much information that you can. At the moment, this is working for me for OSCEs and it might change in the future. And what I really want to say while I'm talking to you about this is don't feel like you need to study the way I study or make all the lists that I'm making and things like that. I certainly don't mean for this to be a this is how it should be done, this is the best way kind of video. This is just how I go about it. I'm hoping that maybe you can extrapolate some of these ideas and apply them to your own personal learning methods. In making these lists I've already realized that there are a few areas for fifth year OSCEs that I actually haven't ever formally touched on because they didn't feature very heavily in the fourth year OSCEs. The main area is in ethics and protocols, palliative care and the end of life communication that comes with that. So as well as making these lists over the last few days I've gathered a few different resources for me to start reading broadly about these topics. I need to get a broad overview of the principles of the topics and important an understanding of how much time I'm going to need to dedicate to learn these to a practical point of me being able to pass these OSCEs on them. A really helpful site that I often start with because of their simplification and OSCE focus is OSCE stuff. It's a UK site so some of the ethics and protocol stuff differs a little bit but in general they're an excellent place to start for getting an understanding of 
what an OSCE might entail because often a textbook will give you so much detail and the internet might give you some irrelevant detail or even incorrect detail depending on where you're looking. So I really like to get an idea of the structure of my OSCE from them and then I adjust it based on any understanding that I have of what our university expects from us on those stations. There are so many amazing OSCE resources that people have created on the internet so I will link the ones that I know and love down below for you guys. Okay, <laughs> two hours. I'm gonna do some things. Good morning guys. It is Saturday morning and I'm about to go off my gym class but on my way to go to office works to get some supplies because I'm out. I need some more folders, some more pens, and my printer's broken. I need a new printer. Unfortunately, I still use so much paper. I just haven't been able to make that switch to doing everything digitally, reading off my computer or an iPad or whatever. So I still print a lot of things and use a lot of paper to write notes. Hopefully in the future, I'll be able to transition a bit better. For now, I've got to do what I've got to do to get through. So three things this morning. We're going to go to Officeworks to get the supplies. We're going to go to the gym to teach our gym class. And we're going to go to the market to get our veggies and produce for the week and a coffee too. I'll quickly show you how I arrange and keep my Oski notes. Basically, at the moment, I just have these trays at the top where I keep my notes that come in and out for the day. So like notes from my rotation, any notes from lectures that I want to get out and revise and maybe don't have a place in an OSCE station per se. And also like my assignments and sheets that I need to get signed. It's just a nice easy way to keep free notes like that. Then down here on the other shelves I have folders full of notes. I try and keep it one folder per topic but that doesn't quite work. I've got some free notes still from last year that I haven't put anywhere, I haven't found a home for or sometimes I keep them out because I know that I want to look at them again very soon and it <laughs> kind of acts as a reminder sometimes. These folders towards the bottom shelves in the middle and on this side, excusing the notes up top. These are mainly actually my study from early years of medicine, the hard copies of notes that I wanted to keep. And then more toward the other side of the shelves are my actual OSCE notes. As an example, well this one is abdopain masses, also renal. We've got some notes from an old lecturer about some upper GI cancers and then this is, oh this is some notes that I made in third year. It's a summary of the first sign investigations and management for the acute abdomen, so abdominal pain that requires surgery or its differentials. And um, then what else have we got in here? Some more OSCE stuff notes, some notes that I've summarized from Tally and O'Connor, more of my summary notes from kind of pulled from all different textbooks. Some AKI notes from third year. Yeah. This is basically my rough setup for my notes that I want to keep and my OSCE study. To show you a few books that I like to that's what I like. I love these ones for clinical knowledge, the Oxford Handbooks. This is a book that I only got last year for OSCE study because one of my tutors recommended it. It's really an awesome little summary. It's not too overwhelming for OSCE. It covers some common topics and gives you some nice, succinct summaries of them. A really good OSCE focus.